I really did suffer in silence. I did my best to hide it. it I was ashamed of it. It was em embarrassing, the idea that this is what's going on and did anybody else notice? To be public about it was not an easy choice. It is so common that if I'm willing to talk about it, there's a lot of people who need to hear it. I'm Stephanie Richards, and for 15 years, I suffered from stress incontinence. So whatever I tried to do, active things, live a very active life, I always had a problem with my bladder leaking, and it ruled my life. For 30 years, I've been a volunteer diver at the National Crime in Baltimore. Diving is a very strenuous activity. Having stress incontinence meant that I just always had to think about being protected. So whether it was in the, the car, my purse, my back pocket, I had pads everywhere so that I would never be caught unprepared. So there are a lot of women out there who are suffering with urinary incontinence and don't seek treatment. And women don't have to suffer in silence with this condition. There are many options we have, both surgical and non-surgical, to help improve their quality of life. How did I come to help Stephanie? Well, we're dive team members, and we were talking about my surgery that I had, and that led to further questions, and she saw the changes that it made in my lifestyle, and being able to do the things that I wanted to do without having to cross my legs every time I sneezed. It's good that I had a chance to talk to Becky, because if I hadn't talked to somebody who had done it, I wouldn't have known that there's a specialty in pelvic floor disorders. I wouldn't have known that there were several options for surgery, and depending on what your situation was, there'd be recommendations for you to choose from. And when I met with Dr. Patterson, she really made me feel comfortable. I was even laughing about the situation as we did the evaluation. I was the one who would stop at the bathroom every time I passed a bathroom. I so we did a surgery um, called a sling procedure, which is a minimally invasive procedure where we make a small incision in the vagina and we use little needles to pass the sling up behind the pubic bone so that it creates a hammock around the urethra so that then when the urethra moves with increases in intra-abdominal pressure such as sneezing, coughing, laughing, exercising, it helps prevent leakage of urine. To be able to discuss it, to find out how common it is, it just took the stigma away, it, it, it brought it into the open to discuss, to research, to solve. All right, thank you. I don't feel any different. Actually, afterwards I was kind of like, did they do it? Is that it? Really? The procedure takes 30 to 40 minutes. You know, I went home that day, rested, binge Netflix, you know, and then <laughs> sat around thinking, I really did it. I can't, I can't wow. believe I really did wow. it. And then you wait How long? six weeks. Six weeks you couldn't. To let it heal, yeah. to let things settle, to let things be strong enough, and then. I got to pamper her. Yeah, Aww. I did. I took advantage of it all I could. The other message I would really like people to know is that it's never too late to come and have, have something done. So a lot of women think they're too old to have surgery, or there's no other options for them, but there's always something we can do to make this better. The biggest change is I can be spontaneous now. I have a new grandnephew who is just all energy and keeping up with him to be myself without having to pay this price. It, it's amazing. Dr. Patterson gave me my life back. I was unprepared for how much this was going to change my life, and I'm, I'm so grateful. I, I can't thank her enough.